everybody, welcome to Stonks Music. My name's Ollie, and today we're going to be having a look at filter delay in this deep dive episode. Let's go! Right, so here we are back in the Ableton manual. Let's jump straight into it. Filter delay. The filter delay provides three independent delay lines, each preceded by linked low pass and high pass filters. This allows applying delay to only certain input signal frequencies, as determined by the filter settings. The feedback from each of the three delays is also routed back through the filters. Each of the three delays can be switched on or off independently. The filter delay device assigns delay 1 to the input signal's left channel, delay 2 to the left and right channels, and delay 3 to the right channel only. The pan control at the right can override the delay channel's outputs, otherwise each delay outputs on the channel from which it derives its input. Each delay channel's filter has an associated on switch, located on the left of each XY controller. The XY controllers adjust the low pass and high pass filters simultaneously for each delay. To edit filter bandwidth, click and drag on the vertical axis. Click and drag on the horizontal axis to set the filter band's frequency. To refer delay time to the song tempo, activate the sync switch, which allows using the delay time beat division chooser. The number switches represent time delays in 16th notes. For example, selecting 4 delays the signal by 4 16th notes, which equals 1 beat, 1 quarter note of delay. With sync mode active, changing the delay time field percentage values shortens and extends delay time by fractional amounts thus producing the swing type of timing effect found in drum machines. If the sync switch is off, the delay time reverts to milliseconds. In this case, to edit the delay time, click and drag up or down in the delay time field, or click in the field and type in a value. The feedback parameter sets how much of the output signal returns to the delay line input. Very high values can lead to runaway feedback and produce a loud oscillation. Watch your ears and speakers if you decide to check out extreme feedback settings. Each delay channel has its own volume control, which can be turned up to plus 12 decibels to compensate for drastic filtering at the input. The dry control adjusts the unprocessed signal level, set it to minimum if using delay in a return track. So this is another really fun one. Let's jump into Ableton and see what we can do with it. Right, so here we are back in Ableton. I made a little beat and had a little mess around while I was playing around with this effect, which we'll have a look at the end. I'll start off just by grabbing one of these samples I used and we'll bring it over here and we can have a look at the filter delay. So, what does the filter delay do? Well, it splits our delay into left, right and left and right and it filters the delay. So it would be pretty much the same as grabbing an auto filter having it on this setting, moving it around before going into our delay. And our, our delay actually has a filter on it as well, but it didn't used to in previous versions of 9. Um, essentially that's what it's doing, and then if you were to group it and have one of them for the left channel only, duplicate one for the right channel only, and then duplicate one for the center, essentially that's what you've got all built into this nice little package here. So you've got your left, right, and your main together. So let me just delete that. And the best way I find to work with this one is just to turn them off, work with them one at a time to really hone in the sound you're looking for. So this is the little sample I've got here. I'll just turn the filter delay off. It's a really distorted go from uh, Sonic 3, which I've got from some sample packs somewhere. So we'll turn it on and we'll listen to just the left speaker. So you can hear straight away if I take this down to the bottom to get those low frequencies, which are the ones we're probably not going to want, but let's listen just for argument's sake. You can hear that. So let's take it up to the mid highs, which is where we'd probably want this sound. So you can hear at the beginning the, the main go sample starts in the middle, and then the delay is on the left hand side. So that can be adjusted with our feedback is the amount of repetitions we're going to have. So I'll turn that up. You can hear that goes on for much longer. So we'll keep that around the 21, 30, somewhere around there. And our delay time here is going to be the amount of 16th notes. So one is going to be 16th note delay. Da -dum. Two is going to be 8th note delay. 
3 is going to be an 8th dotted or 3 16th notes. Which gives that nice duh, 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 duh. 4 would be a quarter note, 4 16th notes. It's going to be on your beat. 5. It's going to be 5 16th notes. So 6. 8. So half notes. And 16th is going to be once a bar. So I quite like three, that's your eighth dotted. It's got a little bit of swing to it. So that's nice for the left hand side. Let's turn the right one on now. And we're gonna have it on the same delay time. But we're gonna mess around with the filter. So we don't want it exactly the same place. Let's have a little listen. Okay, and then let's listen to them together. And that just gives it a little more spread with that delay. And then we'll turn the centre one on. Let's turn these two off. Quite like that on one with the kind of slap back effect. Let's turn the feedback up. And then let's go turn these all on together now. So you've got your central one, your left and right doing that slap back, and then the left and the right doing something slightly different just to give it some width. It's a nice triple delay there without having to put stack loads of stuff up. So I'm just going to add a new audio track and I'll duplicate this again. And we can now look at, I'll drag in a fresh one, filter delay. Right. So now the default that it has is with the left on three and the right on five. Now this is quite nice because it gives us this kind of ping pong style delay. Let's have a listen. I feel like the right one's doing it too long, so let's bring the feedback amount down. So that's quite nice with the left doing eighth triplets and the right doing five sixteenths. Should be a quarter double dotted. So let's try instead, let's do the left on quarters and the eighths on six. So you can hear this nice du-gu-du-gu-du-gu-du that we get there. I'll turn the left right off. So we have the option here of turning the filter off or turning the whole channel off. So if we turn the whole channel off, we just get the initial coming through in the center as it should, and then our separate left and right delays. See that goes on for quite a bit. If we were to turn our feedbacks right up, we don't want 100, let's go down to 95. 100 would be infinite. So you can hear every now and then they are hitting together again. So it's a really nice way to kind of create some of those spatial rhythms in your songs. Um, that's just doing it with one effect. And we had a look before. I won't delete that. I'll keep it. Uh, we had a look at before with delay and with echo um, using this more on a rhythmic kind of sound. So let me just grab a plane operator. And we will just get something. Control Shift M for MIDI. We on eighth notes, and I'll go. Um, just hear what that sounds like. Probably won't be great, but it's kind of a little riff. So if we duplicate that a bunch of times, and then we're going to drag the filter delay back on here and hear what happens when it starts to play these same notes on top of itself. I'm just going to J that all together and probably knock it up an octave too. So I'll turn the left right on as well. And we'll have them all on and we'll take the filters up quite high. So we just get the high notes coming out on the sides and we'll leave the mid one quite low. And what should we do? Well, let's, 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 let's have that three, five, 
So both of them on five at the moment. So the sides will be the same, but slightly different uh, filters. Let's have a listen. So it starts to create these chords where you're playing these single notes are being delayed in different places over each other. So let's take this one to three, leave this one on five and bring the center one down to the 16th. So it's gonna be kind of that shimmer effect. really nice way to turn what would be a quite a simple boring MIDI line into quite an evolving nice atmosphere. And that's just a very straight on the eighth notes MIDI line. Filter delay can give you quite a nice swing, quite a nice movement and you can mess around with these. You can turn the sync up and down a bit more to give it a bit more of that swing effect. So I'll turn this one down. If you wanted to get kind of real funky with this you could right click and start writing some automation in these guys so you could have the filters going up and down so your filtered notes will be changing their uh, frequency as it goes and you could do it the same you could do it alternating I'm just kind of drawing it in randomly for demonstration purposes um, and a lot of what I do at the sound design stage is totally random I just like to get Ableton doing some stuff and see what I can uh, see what I like so let's have a listen So that sounds less like chords now because rather than having the same notes hitting, we're kind of getting different filtered iterations of those chords. So if we turn the dry all the way off, we can just hear the filtered effect. Let's have a listen. It does have quite a few pops and clicks in it, which isn't the nicest. Um, let's turn the central one off, see what we got. So you can hear where this one's shooting up and down. It's going so maybe you'd want a uh, slower evolving sound than that probably in the actual mix that's a little bit too quick so let's just hear this so noticeably louder where both of the uh, filters are playing the same thing because then your left and right channels are playing the same thing and this is also with a very low feedback amount so let's turn this feedback up here when we stop that feedback is carrying it on longer so filter delay we've had a look at delay we've had a look at echo it's very much the same kind of effect I'd be using it for the same things um, creating this kind of ambience on these longer lines or using it to transition these uh, single hits to kind of give them some depth I'll go back here and that is in fact what I've used it for up here in this kind of little beat that I've worked on. So let's just have a look at this quickly. I'm gonna loop this. We'll come down to this one here, which is where I've put the effect on. And we'll just have a listen to it soloed. So it's just boom, ung, ung, ung. And we've got both of these set up together with slightly different things. I could set this one on the five. Let's have a listen. A little bit more movement. So let's have a listen to the whole thing together and see where we've used 
the filter delay. So, I say we could have the feedback up a good amount, probably turn the left right off on this one and make the initial sound a bit louder too. So let's have another listen here. And there is a lot of crunch in that noise which I could probably take off first with an auto filter just to get rid of some of those lows. And that nice long feedback just kind of keeps it rolling over the next section. So have a little listen. I'd say you can even just feedback. Let's go all the way up to 95% with that one. I prefer them both on the threes, to be honest. So that's going to carry on because it's on 95%, but that's quite a nice kind of continual uh, feedback line on top. So the other thing we could do here, let's copy this across and put it on this bell line. Have a quick listen. Because it's a very rhythmic, heavy um, hitter, I don't think it really work. But let's have a little listen to it. So let's go. I mean, for me, I don't think that really works. Maybe if we turn it all down, we can make it a bit subtler. We'll turn the dry up because we want the dry to really be hitting it in the middle there. In that case, it's just going to kind of be spread in that top end a bit more. This five, because it's a longer delay, I'm going to have the feedback a little bit lower again on that one. So we don't really get too many notes hitting at the same time. So let's have a quick listen to that now. And with it off. Just adding a little more space to it, a little more without having to wash it out with a reverb. Um, and if you were to just use straight up a normal delay on there, that would have the same filter on on everything. So this is quite nice that it does give us the central filtered frequency and the left and the right can be slightly different. You can see here I've got them pretty much the same, but that slight difference really does just give a little more of a subtle movement between the speakers. All right, everyone, that'll do it for this episode of Deep Dive. As always, project files are available in the description. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and all that good stuff, and I'll catch up with you a lot next time. Bye.